Good morning, everybody. Thank you. On behalf of the Rob and Melanie Walton Sustainability Solution Service and Arizona State University, I want to thank GreenBiz and the Sustainability Consortium as our founding partners for the Sustainability Festival, which is a month-long series of events here in the Valley that gets kicked off by GreenBiz. Now, as you know, it's going to get harder to live here in Phoenix and many other cities around the world. The livability of our urban centers are getting more difficult due to the activities of the Anthropocene. And the big key things are pollution, heat, and water. If you're wondering why pollution's getting bad, here's a scene I took from my balcony in downtown Phoenix. Not a pretty sight. And a lot of times it's out of sight, so we don't pay attention. The other thing we know, despite the last few days, sorry about the weather, it's going to be getting hotter. The number of days it's going to be 90 degrees and even 100 degrees are getting uh, higher every day and every year. And it's not just it's getting hotter, we're going to have spikes too. Last year, we had almost 190 days in which it was 90 degrees or more here in the valley. And we almost set a record number of days for how many times it didn't get below 90 degrees here in the valley. We got a 90s problem here in the valley. Consequences. Consequences of that are more pollution, people having to stay indoors, more trips to the emergency room. If you run a restaurant or a coffee shop or a store and you expect people to wander in off the streets, there could be two or three months a year when nobody's wandering on the streets. That's not good for business. So ask yourself and your organization what you can do to help cool us off. Um, despite the problems, I'm actually an optimist, and I know there are technologies today that can help us, from electric heavy equipment to technologies to reflect heat. And at ASU and at Solution Service, we're dedicated to working with you to help find and scale those solutions. So come see our booth at the exhibit hall, and you can see four of the really cool technologies we deployed around the world. And then, later see the evening, come join us at the Sustainability Solutions Celebration. Down the block at El Choro, eat, drink, play, connect with some of our great innovators, chat with each other about solving solutions, bring some coats if you've got them with you. One of the things you may have noticed so far in my talk, I've talked about heat and I've talked about pollution, and those are really big problems, but we're here in the desert and water is the other issue. So rather than me telling you about water, I decided I'd bring up the next generation of inter, uh, entrepreneurs and innovators. I want to welcome to the stage my friends from the Billy Lane Law for Middle School in Tucson, Arizona, and they're going to talk to you about their future city based here in Arizona and how they're going to solve the water problems. Kids? I love the sound of rain in the snoring desert. Did it rain a lot when you were a go, Grandma? The average rainfall in Del Sol City is 10 inches per year since we live in the Sonoran Desert in Arizona. But citizens didn't always manage our water resources wisely. Really, Grandma? Tell us more about Del Sol City when you were a little girl. When I was a girl, there was a water crisis, the population was booming, and the city was suffering from climate change, caused, I mean, climate, climate change and droughts. And the GCPD, gallons per capita per day of water use was up to 130. 130 GCPD? Why did you use so much water? <laughs> Citizens didn't think about the value of water like they do today. Buildings and people are way more water efficient. I heard that toilets used to flush with water. 
What a waste. Today it's all about how low can you go. I mean, the composting toilets save up to 3,650 gallons of water per person per year. They produce fertilizer for gardens, save energy, and prevent waste from being discharged downstream. Low flow faucets, underground water tanks, and recycled water landscaping are everywhere today. Yeah, people could buy the new and improved composting toilet at Del Sol City's composting toilet outlet. Today, Del Sol City is a sustainable city with a resilient design. Citizens are responsible water users, and our edu water education center is a big help. In school, we learn a lot about what nature has taught us about collecting and treating water. Water resource, civil, and material engineers all use biomimicry, like the Duke Point cactus rooftops, which were inspired by the, by the drought resistant cacti in the desert. They efficiently collect and store water from humidity and fog, as well as the water harvesters, which were inspired by the Namid beetle, a desert survivor, which collect moisture at night in high humidity. They use meadow organic framework filters that trap water, and in the daylight the sun heats up the harvesters like a greenhouse, and water molecules condense as distilled water. Yeah, and the gooey cactus guts are cool. They purify water. Gooey cactus gut filtration is sustainable since, it is, since cactus is naturally grown in Arizona. They have been used by Native Americans for thousands of years. Gooey cactus cores remove sediment, arsenic, and bacteria. And it, it is boiled with contaminated water that creates a film that is easily skimmed away that creates safe, drinkable water. Food is sustainable too. Aeroponics towers are located throughout the city and provide many benefits for our citizens, such as it reduces the demand for potable water, it's a faster, faster growth and higher plant yield, it's non-polluting, and it fits acres of farms into a vertical building. It's also designed by agricultural and chemical engineers. In Ms. Greg's class this year, we learned a lot about water, like that we get our water from the Colorado River, rainfall, and treated recycled wastewater. Where do we store our water, Grandma? Del Sol City stores most of our water underground in recharge ponds that filter water into the aquifer, large capacity reservoirs, mini reservoirs, underground water storage tanks by homes and businesses. Water dashboards and water data centers help secure water quality. Personal dashboard apps help people monitor their own GCPD too. As you both know, one of my favorite places is the Santa Cruz River. The Santa Cruz River was dried up when I was a girl and it only ran when it rained. Where did it run to? Just kidding. Very funny, dear. <laughs> Environmentalists restored the Santa Cruz River by recharging it with recycled and treated wastewater. Now it's a beautiful habitat for people and wild, wildlife to enjoy. How else did Delso City become more resilient? Housing is more affordable and accessible. Developers are required to use inclusionary zoning and sell 35% of house, new, newly built houses at below market value. Yeah, and our education is accessible now that the universities are or spread throughout the city. Yes, it is easy to get around the city because everyone uses our solar share buses and personal cars are very rare. There's the rain again. How does water travel through our city? Rainwater runoff will be filtered through our premobile surfaces and moved to the aquifer. Rooftop runoff will be filtered and stored in our underground water tanks. And of course, our gray water and wastewater will travel to our water treatment centers before going to the water basins and the aquifer. Then, water is pumped and stored in our wells and man-made aquifers until we need it. Our energy is green with solar windows on our buildings, our homes, our public transit. We also have solar farms. We also have uh, microgrids, but a unique way Dusso City generates power is its compact nuclear fusion plants. Our neighborhoods are walkable and our buildings are also multi-use. Del Sol City is a resilient city with a sustainable design. Citizens are responsible water users, and that pretty much sums up Del Sol City. Don't forget about all the amazing engineers that help construct Del Sol City, like our water resource and civil engineers, material engineers and biomimicry specialists, electrical engineers, transportation engineers, and biomedical engineers. Thank you, Grandma. Thank you, Grandma. You're welcome, kiddos. Let's play in the rain. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys, for watching our presentation. Weren't they terrific? Thank you. Another round of applause. And now you know, now you know why I had them go on after me, because they're a hard act to follow. So come join us at the celebration tonight. They'll be down at our booth. Come see them, chat with them, see their display, 
have a good rest of the conference. Thanks very much.